Hi, everybody. Good morning. I'm super excited to be here at this AutoML conference. A huge thank you to Ori and the MDLI team for organizing this event. My name is Noam Brezis, and I'm the CTO and co-founder of PCAN, and I'm going to talk about the next generation AutoML. So, but first of all, a little bit about myself. I started in the Army as a dev team leader, especially in the area of cybersecurity. After leaving the Army, I went and was a data consultant for many companies, helping building their data infrastructure and query optimization. After that, I went to the academia. I did my master's and PhD in brain research in a field called computational neuroscience. So together with a very good friend called Zohar, we've actually built models that explain how the brains create and you know, families of neurons create specific actions. That was super, super exciting. And after finishing our PhD together with Zohar, we have founded PCAN. I'm gonna talk about the company and about what we're doing very, very soon. Besides that, so actually this year I became 40 and I wasn't so in the you know prestigious Forbes 40 under 40 group, but at least I'm in the three under five, which is an amazing group of itself. So having these very, very cute three kids. Okay, let's talk about what are the stages that we need in order to build and deploy machine learning models. So of course we start with data, right? Data, there's very, you know, various sorts of data that you're gonna combine together in order to create the model. But the first step is gonna be structuring this data, having, you know, meaningful data together. Then of course having a label, encoding and cleansing, so of course we want our model, in order to create the model, we need the data to be under numeric format. So we're gonna encode it, we're gonna cleanse. We, want, we need this data to be very clean in order for us to be able to really create the model. Imputation is the stage where we're taking missing values and we're filling them with all sorts of techniques. Feature engineering is extremely important. It's the step where you're taking data and actually making sense of it for the model to really understand what you have in your data and to be able to grasp that data and find the various patterns in order to run the prediction. So feature engineering and feature selection are very, very much going together where feature selection is the stage where you take these features that you're creating and you find out which out of them are really important to create your model. Of course, all these steps are data preparation. Sometimes you can call them uh, pre-processing of data before you get to the modeling stage. And then there's the modeling stage. That's where, okay, your data is ready. You can run the model. And normally in these stages, you're gonna have a step of hyperparameter optimization. So finding the best model and what are the parameters, hyperparameters of this model. Or in many cases, it can be an ensemble of many models in order to create the prediction. And of course, then you're gonna check, you'll have an out of sample validation, checking how well your model is running. And that's the modeling part. But then of course, we, we're not just about having predictions, right? We want to have an action. So we're gonna have an A-B test and very important, we're gonna monitor that indeed our model is working ongoing. So these are the steps that we need to have in order to create a model. Now it's very important, it's not that you just run them and you finished. You can have cycles until you're really happy with the model that you need. So that's what a data scientist or a group of data scientists would need to do in order to create a model. Now, you know, of course, people are saying, this is so much to do, let's try and automate. And that's, so you have in front of you here, the most common AutoML open sources. So let's start from the right side, right hand side. You can see here, we have first group, the AutoGluon, AutoWeka, and AutoScaler, which are actually 
What they're work, especially uh, doing is finding the best model. So it's the best family of models and hyperparameter optimization. It's if we we're talking before about different stages, it's really about the modeling part. But what's really special is that lately, actually, we have new tools which also do auto feature, feature engineering and hyperparameter optimization. Those are the one in the middle here. For example, MLJAR, PyCaret, and TPOC, which are amazing tools, and definitely I recommend to try them. So they are very much both. They're sometimes you can call them end to end, although it's not really purely end to end, and we'll talk about this soon. But then there's also very, uh, there are tools which are really specialized in creating feature engineering. For example, feature tools and the TS French, which is especially for time series. So these, if you're really interested, you know, in AutoML, I would definitely recommend to go to these tools and learn how to use them. They can do amazing things for you. So just maybe two seconds about how automatic feature engineering is created. Because, I mean, finding the best models, I'm sure a lot of people are going to talk about this today. And, you know, and there are so many algorithms about how to find a very good model or an ensemble of models. But feature engineering is very different sort of algorithms. It's you want to create out of your data something that's meaningful for the model. So you can see, for example, MLJAR is actually creating all sorts of aggregations. And so they have like what they call the depth. So how, what's the depth of the data that you're going to go into? And you can see that the idea is that if you have table which are connected to each other, they're going to create an aggregation, and then they're going to create another aggregation on top of that. And so that's how they're actually going to create so many combinations of aggregations, where at the end they'll understand and of course have feature selection in order to understand which of these aggregation really contributes for the prediction. Feature tools, by the way, took a very different approach. It's like a different problem that they're solving. They're combining features which are already been created, but they're going to create new features out of them, especially a combination. So you can see here, for example, they're adding two features or then dividing between two features, and they're going to do that for all the features that you have. And so they're like, we we'll create this huge amount of new features, which are actually combinations, and they're going to find which of them are the most important. So that's really the most common tools that today you have for AutoML. What's the next generation? So what we at PCAM understood is that if you really want an end-to-end -end solution, you need to think a little bit differently. You can't really just think about feature engineering, feature selection. That's too, that's too narrow. That's not looking at the whole picture. And so what we want at Pekin and what we've built at Pekin is actually a platform that data analysts can use. You don't need to be a data scientist, which understands exactly what you're doing. You can be you know, a data analyst that doesn't have background in data science and you can create machine learning models. And how do we do that? So our approach is very much what we call a use case driven. We understand that actually in order to create all this pipeline, if you really want to do that for somebody who doesn't know data science, you need to understand what's the business question that the user is gonna, you know, wants really to handle. And so for example, you can see here various uh, business questions or use cases that we have implemented inside PCAN. So at PCAN, we've built this data framework where the idea, remember, our user is a data analyst. And all we want our data analyst actually to mark is really related to data. And we want our data analyst to mark what is the entity that they want to run the prediction for and how often they want to run the prediction. So, and then we'll have our entity ID and prediction time. So think just for example, let's take a churn as an example. And so we, our user is gonna mark the entity, which is the customer and how often they want the prediction to be. For example, daily, weekly, and monthly. Once they have that, we're gonna automatically 
connect the data to the attributes table. And so what's really important, of course, and remember, machine learning is really about learning from historical data, right? Historical events. So it's very important that once you have an historical event that you want to learn from, you're going to connect attribute information such as website page views, transactions, purchases, et cetera, et cetera, but only data that is previous to the prediction time. And that's exactly what we're doing at PCAN. So once our data is connected and we have a good understanding, this is, by the way, uh, how the UI is created. And you can see the user just drags the attribute tables. And once it's connected in PCAN, we know exactly how to blend that data in. And so we're taking into consideration, first of all, of course, you know, we're going to take uh, the whole data and we're going to split it for time series. So we're going to have our train validation and test set. We take into consideration overfitting. We have many techniques to make sure that actually we have as minimum as possible of overfitting. Leakage is what I just talked about, where you actually don't want to plug information from the future when you're running the prediction. Only take data that was in the past. And data drift, which is a case where actually with time, data, of course, can change. And in PCAN, and I'm going to show this just soon, we can see that we have live monitoring of our data and we can analyze that we have a data drift and alert on it. So just a little bit of behind the scenes. So we have our data and now we know what's the use case that we want to run, right? What is the business question that we want to answer? And what is really important in PCAN, uh, aspect of analyzing the data. We have automatic analytics analysis, sorry, of the data. And that's going to create what you see in front of you, which is an airflow DAG. So this is actually the brain behind PCAN, where you can see all the various steps that we're going to run in order to create our model. So we're going to, of course, like we said earlier, we're going to split the data, we're going to create the features, we're going to have the model trained. And this whole pipeline is very different according to the different use cases and sort of data that we're connect, connecting in. And so once we have the model, remember our user is the data analyst, of course it's gonna be business driven. It's not gonna be about just you know statistical information, but really how we're using the model in order to show value to the business. And finally, once you're happy with the model, you're just gonna press the use the model, and button, and that's where you're going to have live evaluation, monitoring. So very important aspect of AutoML is not only to have the model, but also to be able to really have live monitoring of your model. So that's very quick overview of what we've done and achieved in PCAN. And this is, of course, our team in Israel will be super happy if you want to join us we're looking for a data scientist and data analyst. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day.